A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints, September 29th, Blessed Bernardin of Feltre, Confessor, First Order. Blessed Bernardin was born at Feltre, Venice, and was the son of an ancient and noble family. In baptism, he received the name of Martin. His father was repeatedly appointed ambassador for Venice. The boy gave evidence of rare mental gifts, and at the age of 12 he could speak Latin fluently. At 15, on the occasion of a treaty, he read in the public square a lengthy poem he had composed, extolling peace. The composition earned him the universal applause of his fellow citizens. In addition, the young man possessed unusual piety and angelic innocence. In accordance with the wish of his father, he entered the University of Padua to study law. The sudden death of two of his professors, together with the sermons of St. James of the March during the Lent of 1456, induced him to enter the Franciscan order. St. James, who had a short time before attended the canonization of St. Bernardin of Siena, gave him the name of Bernardin and predicted that like his patron saint, he would be a true soldier of Christ against the powers of hell. After a lengthy preparation in thorough study, and still more in the virtues required by the apostolate, Bernardin was appointed to the office of missionary at the age of 30. He approached the task with fear rather than with confidence in himself, and only in virtue of holy obedience. But shortly the extraordinary results of his preaching began to manifest themselves. With severity he inveighed against the vices of the period, sensuality, pride and avarice. He was no respecter of persons, but he knew just how to word his reproofs so as to infuse into the hearts of his hearers hatred for their own vices and the desire to get rid of them. For 25 years he preached in almost all the larger towns of Italy, as well as in many villages. At the end of his missions a large bonfire was usually built, in which bad books, indecent pictures, dice and gambling boards, as well as the false hair of women together with other vain and foolish ornaments of theirs, were brought together and consigned to the flames. Following the instructions of St. Francis, Bernardin set himself the special task of composing enmities and removing factions. His success included Pope Innocent VIII to entrust him with a mission to Umbria to settle various disputes. The poor were the special object of his solicitude. They were being imposed upon by usurers who bled them in a merciless way. In order to wrest them from the hands of those men, Bernardin promoted a kind of loan bank called Mounts of Piety. Earlier Franciscan missionaries had introduced them, but Bernardin gave them a new set of rules and gradually popularized them throughout Italy, for which reason he is often considered their founder. Wealthy citizens were prevailed on to contribute sufficient money, from which the less prosperous could obtain sums as needed, against a reasonable guarantee and moderate interest. The plan furnished the wealthy class with a favourable opportunity to practice mercy without too great a sacrifice. At the same time, it was more of a work of Christianity than of business. Countless persons in the lesser walks of life were saved by this plan, and the wealthy became the object of their gratitude. This beneficent institution considered to function after Bernardin's death, and in 1515 the General Council of the Lateran approved and recommended it. Rich in merit and virtue, which God frequently attested by miracles, Father Bernardin entered into eternal rest in the convent of Pavia on September 28, 1494. At once the people came to venerate him, and many miracles were wrought. Pope Innocent X beatified him, and the cities of Pavia and Feltre chose him as their patron. A beautiful prayer written by Blessed Bernardin is known to every Catholic today, the Anima Christi, Soul of Christ, sanctify me. It was a favourite prayer of St. Ignatius Loyola, but it is not generally known that it is of Franciscan origin. A Reflection on Disinterested Charity Consider how noble and untainted was the charity of Blessed Bernardin. The temporal need and oppression of the people pressed so heavily upon him that it was for him like a personal problem. In the needy he beheld his true brothers. In his zeal he resolved to help them. He did not dread the hatred of the usurers, nor the disappointment of refusal on the part of those who could have aided the good work. 
He was not over anxious to learn whether the poor themselves would appreciate his efforts. He thought only of the need of his neighbour and applied to himself the words of the parable of the Good Samaritan, Take care of him. Luke 10, 35. Have those same words not been spoken to us as well? Our Lord says to us all, Love your neighbour as yourself. Matthew 19, 19. Do you do that? Consider how different is the charity so generally practised in the world. Many are busy aiding the poor and the needy, but they do it to win the praises of men. Others await the grateful response of the poor, and if this is wanting, they cease their benefactions. Others again speculate on temporal gain. And there are Christians who are as heartless as any usurer, taking advantage of people who are already losing in business and scheming to acquire the last of their stock and ruin them entirely. The Apostle Paul said already in his day, All seek things that are their own. Philippians 2.21 Are we not obliged to repeat this complaint in our day? Examine your own charity. Consider how well Blessed Bernardin planned his undertaking for the benefit of the poor. He united wealthy persons in an association to lend money to the needy. He obligated the borrowers to furnish security and to pay a moderate amount of interest so that the undertaking could be supported and not encourage indolence. His work of charity put Christian people of prominence in touch with people in lower walks of life who at that are so often shiftless so that the advice, instruction and encouragement of the former might better the condition of the latter. In this day of ours, when so many people are bounded in organisations with less noble purposes, should it not be possible to make true charity the object of an organisation? The need of many people would be relieved by it, and the bond of charity would bring the members closer to God. Prayer of the Church O God, who didst deign to inflame Blessed Bernardin with apostolic zeal, so that he could draw the faithful out of the pool of vice, mercifully grant, we beseech thee, that through his intercession we may be delivered from all sin and danger, and directed to our heavenly home. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.